1925. The nation's finances were healthy. The future appeared bright as economists predicted an age of wealth. Howard Deering Johnson, 27, had a bleak outlook. 40,000. Johnson owes. He willingly took his father's business duties and borrowed 500 to take over a tiny patent medicine store, soda fountain, and newsstand in Wollaston, Massachusetts. A loss-making store, Johnson was optimistic. First, he sent newspaper delivery guys to adjacent towns. Then Johnson headed to the soda fountain. Vanilla, chocolate, and strawberry ice cream were available. Johnson wanted more flavors, but first he wanted to increase the quality of his ice cream. Using a basement freezer, he began cranking by hand to make the greatest product. Johnson created a superior ice cream by increasing the butterfat and utilizing natural ingredients. His customers agreed, and queues formed outside his shop. Soon, he was selling ice cream at beach stalls and other venues. In three years, he overcame his debts and grew his firm. He added frankforts, hamburgers, and other dishes, ensuring their quality. Johnson's store had become a restaurant, so he chose to focus on cuisine. In 1929, he founded a restaurant in Quincy, Massachusetts, and planned growth. In 1929, the stock market crash ushered in the Great Depression and derailed Johnson's development ambitions. Johnson envisioned a traveler-friendly restaurant franchise. He predicted better roads and more people on the go who would seek decent cuisine at reasonable pricing. He owed so much he couldn't borrow more yet wanted to grow. He thought about franchising. Johnson convinced a Cape Cod merchant to use the Howard Johnson's name for a charge and to buy food and supplies from him. Johnson made similar deals with other guys. That was the start of restaurant franchising, a model copied by many. By 1935, Massachusetts had 25 Howard Johnson's ice cream and sandwich outlets. Irving Carter opened Milford's Route 1 Howard Johnson's a year later. Howard Johnson's was open until 1999. In the 1930s, there were more than 100 Howard Johnson's restaurants from Maine to Florida. Howard Johnson's launched the first turnpike restaurant in the U.S. The firm became the country's top toll road operator. Howard Johnson's business grew. Johnson faced financial calamity again during World War I. Gasoline shortages and travel restrictions cut off his consumers. The company faced insolvency as most eateries shuttered. Johnson fed military bases, defense factories, and colleges to keep the company alive. Most restaurants reopened, and new ones were established after the war. A paucity of experienced cooks was already apparent. Thus, actions had to be taken. Johnson pioneered the new convenience food idea of processing and pre-porting food at company-operated central factories and shipping to restaurants for final preparation and cooking. Each restaurant has an orange roof so travelers could identify it. Howard Johnson's became known for superb meals at low costs and 28 types of ice cream. In 1954, Howard Johnson's opened its first franchise motor lodge in Savannah, Georgia. A pre-sold moniker became a meal and overnight convenience for motorists. Howard B. Johnson took over for his father in 1959. In 1961, the company went public on the New York Stock Exchange. 1960s sales surpassed McDonald's, Burger King, and KFC combined. Howard Johnson's was the second largest food supplier in the U.S. Howard Johnson's added ground round restaurants to its Red Coach Grills chain in 1969. Howard Johnson's enterprise included over 1,000 restaurants, 500 motor lodges, vending and turnpike operations, and a manufacturing and distribution system. Despite expansion, Howard Johnson's company was hurt by fast food and other chains. The founder's son sold Howard Johnson's to Imperial Group for $630 million in 1980. Millions of dollars, new management, and restaurant ideas failed to revive the company. Bumbershoots, Chats, and Deli Baker Ice Cream Maker are Imperial-owned restaurants. Three Penny Inn's hotels failed. Imperial sold the firm to Marriott Corporation in 1985, except Ground Round. 
Marriott wanted to change the restaurants to its own concepts, so it sold the motel-slash-hotel-slash-motor lodge system to Prime Motor Inns. Sendent Corporation owns the 500 hotel chain because Howard Johnson's franchisees had spent decades building their local company, they worried about the chain's long-term future. In 1986, franchisees led by Griffin Bell sued Marriott and Prime. Franchisees settled and formed Franchise Associates. Incorporated FAI got the license to franchise Howard Johnson's restaurants and ice cream stores. FAI owns the original HE recipes and still offers macaroni and cheese, tender sweet fried clams, chicken croquettes, and toasties. FAI opened a prototype, Howard Johnson's Restaurant, in Canton, MA, in 1990. It closed in 2000. Bay City, Michigan, and Millington. Maryland Howard Johnson's closed on May 15, 2005. Times Square's Howard Johnson's closed on July 8, 2005, followed by locations in Asbury Park, New Jersey, and Waterbury, Connecticut. FAI lost the Howard Johnson's food and beverage rights in 2005 when Sendent, now Wyndham Worldwide, recovered them and sold them to La Mancha Group, LLC. La Mancha planned to revive the brand with Howard Johnson's coffee in several existing hotels, followed by frozen meals and ice cream. La Mancha closed, and hopes for its resurrection are fading. Wyndham Worldwide owns Howard Johnson's brands. Lake George, New York's Howard Johnson's will stay in 2020. Restaurant hours are restricted. The pioneering restaurant business started off as a soda fountain in Quincy, Massachusetts, but it eventually expanded to more than a thousand locations throughout the country. It reached the pinnacle of success and became the most well-known restaurant in the United States. The chain eventually reduced down to a single location in Lake George, New York, which operated until 2022 before ultimately going out of business.